Chapter 11 Right, I reluctantly agreed. We're doing it, Dennis proclaimed, squeezing my shoulder. Everyone laughed and cheered. What's going on here? I asked myself. Isn't Dennis taking this joke a little too far? I want to help, someone exclaimed. Me too. Let's all kill him. Tonight, someone added. Everyone laughed. I dare you, Lenny cried. I really dare you. Do it, someone shouted. Lenny turns to me. How are you going to do it, he demanded. I formed a gun with my thumb and pointer finger and aimed it at Lanny. Everyone laughed again. Climbing to his feet, Zack pulled up his hair until it stood straight up on his head. Then he stooped his shoulders and did a pretty good impression of Mr. Northwood. I don't like your smiles. You're all staying after school for the rest of the century. We're having a short quiz. Take out a sheet of paper and number it from one to three thousand. We were all in hysterics. Zack really was a riot. He sounded just like Mr. Northwood, and he kind of looked like him with his hair straight up like that. Did you hear what Northwood did to Carter Phillips? Lanny asked, shaking his head. Northwood took five points off Carter's final exam, because she forgot to put her name on top. The five points lowered Carter from a B to a C. Everyone groaned. He made me stay an hour after school my birthday, a girl on the other couch cried. What a jerk, someone said. He really hates us all, Melody murmured. Not as much as we hate him, Lanny said. Don't worry, Dennis told them, grinning. Joanna and I are going to take care of him. We've been making plans. When? Someone demanded. Before the next unit test? Dennis smiled at me. His arm tightened around me. It's a secret, he told them, his green eyes flashing excitedly. We don't want to spoil the surprise. I laughed along with everyone else, but I felt a sudden chill. Was Dennis getting serious about this? The idea of killing Mr. Northwood had started out as a joke. It was still just a joke, right? I was so surprised when Dennis kissed me. When he drove me home, the car radio was on so loud we couldn't talk. He pulled up my driveway, then switched off the engine and the lights. And he reached across the seat and pulled me close. The kiss was awkward at first. I was just so startled. But then I slid my hands behind his head, wrapping my fingers through his silky dark hair, holding his face against mine. The kiss lasted a long time. When it ended, I was breathless. He likes me, I thought. I can tell. He really likes me. Waiting for my breathing to return to normal, I glanced up at my house. It was entirely dark except for the light over the front stoop. The bare branches of the two entwined maple trees in the center of the front yard shivered in a cold breeze. Fat brown leaves scrabbled like dark shadows over the frosted glass. I'm glad I asked you out, Dennis said softly. Me too, I murmured. He reached out his arms for me again. This time, I slid comfortably to him, and we kissed for a long time. Thoughts about Caitlin forced their way into my mind as I wrapped my arms tighter around Dennis and kissed him. I shut my eyes and willed Caitlin away, far away. I opened my eyes when the kiss ended. What was that tingling feeling on the back of my neck? Still tasting Dennis's lips on mine, I had a sudden feeling that we were being watched. I pulled away from him. Joanna, what is it? Dennis whispered. I gazed out the windshield, my eyes searching the darkness, and gasped in horror. Chapter 12 Mr. Northwood. He was just standing there in his yard, like a statue. He had a large stick in one hand, a fallen tree branch. He was leaning on it like a cane, standing in deep shadows a few yards from the driveway, leaning on the stick, staring into the car, just standing and staring at us. Dennis turned toward the windshield and followed my gaze. Hey, he cried, what's he doing? I, I don't know, I stammered. He's watching us, I think. Behind us, a car rolled quietly down Fear Street. As its headlights played over the still form of Mr. Northwood, I caught the stern, disapproving expression set on his face. What a creep, Dennis declared. What a total creep. Let's just ignore him, I suggested, turning to Dennis with a devilish smile. Dennis scowled in Mr. Northwood's direction. No, I'd better go, Joanna. Want to come in for a while? I suggested. Dennis shook his head. His eyes were still on Mr. Northwood. I'd better go. See you Monday, okay? Okay. I pushed open the car door. A burst of cold air greeted me. Waving good night to Dennis, I climbed out and ran to my front door. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught Mr. Northwood still standing there, frozen like a snowman in his long gray overcoat. Why is he standing there? I wondered angrily. Is he really spying on me? Dennis's headlights slid over me as he backed down the drive. I was so furious at Mr. Northwood, my hands shook as I tried to slide my key into the front door. What right does he have to spy on me? What business is it of his? What is he doing out here? 
Finally, I got the key in the lock, twisted it, and pushed the door open. The house was warm and smelled of the roast chicken we'd had for dinner. I was trembling all over as I tossed my coat over the banister. Mr. Northwood spoiled my date, I thought bitterly. Dennis and I were feeling so close to each other, and that creep Northwood spoiled it all. My anger boiled up into a rage. I realized my hands were balled into tight fists. Without thinking, I made my way to the little green side table against the living room wall. The living room was dark. I pulled open the drawer in a table. My hand fumbled around inside it until I found what I was looking for. The pistol. The pistol my dad had left us for protection when he moved out. It felt sleek and cool in my hot, hot hand. I wasn't thinking clearly. I was too furious to think clearly. Why was he spying on me? Why? Without realizing it, without thinking about what I was doing, I made my way to the window. The pistol was gripped tightly in my hand. Leaning against the glass, I peered out into the darkness. There he was. Mr. Northwood hadn't moved. He was leaning on a tree branch, smoking a pipe. I could see the gray smoke swirl up against the purple sky. Why did you spoil my date, Mr. Northwood? What right do you have to spy on me and ruin my life? Don't you know how much tonight meant to me? I was trembling with anger. With a shaking hand, I pulled up the window. The cold air felt good against my face. My eyes on Mr. Northwood, I pulled back the hammer of the pistol, the way my dad had shown me. Killing Mr. Northwood is so easy, I told myself. So incredibly easy. Leaning against the windowsill to steady myself, I raised the pistol. I aimed it at Mr. Northwood. Steady. Steady. I slid my finger over the trigger. So incredibly easy. So easy to kill him. I aimed for his chest. And suddenly, the living room lights flashed on. Joanna, my mother exclaimed, bursting into the room. What are you doing with that gun? Too late, Mom. I pulled the trigger. Chapter 13 Of course the pistol wasn't loaded. The cartridge with the bullets was still in the drawer. Lowering the pistol to my side, I turned to my mom. I, I thought I heard a burglar, I lied. A burglar? Mom cried, her eyes widening in alarm. I'll call the police. No, wait, I told her. There's no one there. I just heard the wind or something. You know how I get freaked at night sometimes. Close the window, my mom said, eyeing me suspiciously. It's cold enough in this drafty old house. Peering out into the dark front yard, I pushed the window open. To my surprise, Mr. Northwood had disappeared. I guessed he had finally returned to his house. I wish I could really make you disappear, I thought, still feeling shaky. You shouldn't take that gun out, Mom said, tightening the belt on her pink terry cloth robe. I really don't want it in the house. It's just one more example of your father's poor judgment, she sighed. It isn't loaded, I said softly. I dropped it into the drawer and slid the drawer shut. How was your date? Mom asked, her dark eyes boring into me, studying me. Great, I told her. Really great. As I hurried up to my room, I wondered if Dennis would ever ask me out again. Melody cornered me in a girl's locker room in school Monday morning. We had just played volleyball in gym. Melody's normally perfect hair was actually a little messed up. I want to tell you something, she said, her pale blue eyes narrowed at me. We're going to be late, I told her. The bell is going to ring. It won't take long, she replied, keeping her voice low. You know, Caitlin found out about you and Dennis. She stared hard at me, watching my reaction. I didn't react much. I let my mouth drop open in surprise, but I didn't say anything. I didn't tell her, Melody said, letting the towel she was holding drop to the bench between the lockers. But she found out. There were so many kids at my house Friday night. I mean, she was bound to find out. So, I asked, glancing up at the clock. So she's very upset, Melody continued. I don't know what Dennis told you, but Caitlin can be very jealous. I just thought I should warn you. Caitlin doesn't want anyone else going out with Dennis. I think that's up to Dennis, isn't it? I asked shrilly. I didn't mean to sound so intense, but I couldn't help it. Well, don't have a cow, Melody exploded nastily. I was just trying to give you a friendly warning. The bell rang, startling us both. Applying lip gloss as she ran, Melody hurried away. What's going on? I wondered. I knew that Caitlin and Melody were pals. Did Caitlin send Melody to warn me? Did Dennis lie when he told me that he and Caitlin sometimes go out with other people? Was Melody just being vicious, just trying to stir up trouble? The questions repeated in my head as I hurried to class, but no answers came to me. After school, I was making my way through the crowded halls to the library on the second floor. I had to get some material on cloning for a science project Margaret and I were working on together. I passed Caitlin going the other way on the stairs. I was pretty sure she saw me, but she kept on talking to the girl beside her and stepped right by me. At the top of the stairs, I turned toward the library. 
I stopped when I heard a familiar voice calling my name. Oh, hi, Dennis, I said, flashing him a warm smile. What's up? He was wearing his maroon and gray shady side jacket over baggy faded jeans. He had a half-eaten granola bar in his hand. Smiling back at me, he offered me a bite. I shook my head. No thanks. He pulled a piece of thread off the shoulder of my blue sweater. Want to study together tonight? He asked. I could come over after track practice. He does like me, I thought happily. Melody suddenly pushed her way into my mind. Again I saw her eyeing me sternly, warning me about Caitlin. Dennis took a bite of the granola bar, waiting for my answer. That would be great, I told him. I probably shouldn't have let myself sound so excited. I should have acted more casual about it, but I couldn't help it. Sorry, Caitlin, I thought. I really like Dennis. And if Dennis really likes me, it's just too bad for you. Later, Dennis said, giving me a funny little two-finger salute. Later, I repeated happily. By the time I got home, I was having second thoughts. I mean, my house is so shabby and run down, it's embarrassing. Melody's house is like a palace compared to mine. It's five times as big for one, and forget about chrome and white leather. Our living room is filled with a worn-out corduroy couch and two beat-up vinyl armchairs. Pitiful, really pitiful. Gazing unhappily around the living room, I was tempted to call Dennis and make up some excuse why he couldn't come over. I wanted him to like me so much, and I was really afraid that when he saw what my house looked like, he would decide I couldn't be part of his crowd. Crazy thinking, I guess. But Dennis had me a little unbalanced, I admit it. I made myself a tuna fish sandwich for dinner and piled the plate high with potato chips. That's one great advantage of being as skinny as I am. You can eat as many potato chips as you like. When the phone rang after my lonely dinner, I ran to answer it. Is Dennis calling with an excuse for why I can't come over, I thought. Hello, I swallowed hard, expecting to hear his voice. Hi, Joanna, it's me. Margaret, what time should I come over? Huh? Margaret's question caught me by surprise. You said we work at your house tonight, remember? Margaret said, you know, on our science project? Oh, right. Dennis had me so crazed, I had totally forgotten about my plan to get together with Margaret. Uh, I can't do it tonight, Margaret. I, uh, I didn't want to tell her I was dumping her for Dennis. She and I really did have to work on the project. It was due on Friday. I think I'm getting the flu, I blurted out. I'm such a bad liar. It was the first thing that popped into my head. You seemed fun in school today, Margaret insisted. I could tell she didn't quite believe me. I just started to feel sick after school, I told her, feeling really guilty. I'm going to bed early. Maybe I'll be okay tomorrow. Want to get together tomorrow night? Yeah, I guess, Margaret replied. Feel better, okay? She hung up. I stood there, thinking about Margaret, about what a good friend she was. Why did I lie to her? I asked myself. Why didn't I just tell her that Dennis was coming over to study tonight? Margaret would be happy for me. No, she wouldn't, I decided. She'd be angry and hurt that I stood her up for Dennis. I did the right thing by telling her a little white lie. The doorbell rang. I hurried to answer it. Dennis! Hi! I called eagerly. I pulled open the front door and stared in amazement. Chapter 14 Hey, how's it going? Dennis grinned at me. Four other faces peered in at me. Dennis had brought a whole group. Melody, Zach, Lanny, and even Caitlin. They pushed past me into the house, all talking at once. I flashed Dennis a what's going on here look, but he didn't seem to notice. After tossing their coats on a chair, they sprawled around the living room, talking and laughing, dropping their backpacks to the floor, pretty much ignoring me. Melody stretched her legs over the arm of a brown vinyl armchair. She was wearing a long red sweater over black tights. Her blonde hair was twisted up in a tight bun behind her head. What are we doing here? she asked Dennis. Are we studying or what? We're partying, Zack said, grinning. He had dropped his large hulk body onto the floor. He was wearing his blue sunglasses as usual. He turned to me. Do you have anything to drink? I think there are some Cokes in the fridge, I replied. I like your house, Lanny said, tapping a hand on the shabby corduroy couch. It's real comfortable. Is anyone else home? Caitlin asked, glancing around. She stood very close to Dennis, who was sitting on the windowsill. She brushed something off the shoulder of his sweatshirt. Caitlin had a navy blue baseball cap pulled down over her short brown hair. Her cheeks were red, from the cold outside, I guessed. I told her my mom was at work. Then I went to see if there were enough cokes for everyone. Why didn't Dennis warn me, I wondered, as I made my way to the kitchen. Why didn't he tell me he was bringing over all of his friends? I was disappointed that he hadn't come alone, but I was also happy to have them all in my house. I mean, maybe this meant they were accepting me into the group. 
Maybe this meant we were all going to be friends. I bent down and started pulling cans of Coke out of the fridge. I could hear Caitlin laughing about something in the other room. I felt a little uncomfortable having Caitlin there, especially after what Melody had told me. But Caitlin didn't seem to be angry or anything. In fact, she seems to be in a really good mood. Did she really tell Melody to warn me to stay away from him? Did she even care? It was all too confusing. I decided to just stay cool and try to enjoy my new friends. Hope you don't mind the crowd scene. Dennis suddenly appeared in a kitchen doorway. He smiled at me, a little boy smile. No problem, I returned his smile. I had a sudden impulse to run over to him and throw my arms around him. He was just so great looking. Uh oh, Joanna, I thought. Watch out. You're really falling for him. Watch out. Dennis helped me carry in the cokes. When we returned to the living room, the mood had changed. Zack had climbed to his feet and was lumbering back and forth in front of the window. Do you believe that, jerk? He was demanding. He scratched his curly red hair as he paced. Do you believe him? Who were you talking about? Dennis asked him, sitting down on the floor beside Caitlin. Northwood, of course, Zack replied bitterly. Didn't you hear about it, Dennis? I'm sure it was all over school. What well, was? Dennis asked. He took a long swig from his coke can, his green eyes locked on Zack. Northwood called Zack up after class. He caught him cheating on the quiz, Lanny said, an amused grin on his face. I wasn't cheating, Zack screamed, glaring at Lanny. Then why were you leaning over Dina Martinson's shoulder, Melody demanded. I was asking her what time it was, Zack replied. I wasn't looking at her answers. I was asking for the time. Melody and Lanny laughed scornfully. Caitlin rolled her eyes. We don't believe you, Dennis said softly, snickering. Zack exploded, letting out a string of curses. I couldn't see his eyes behind the blue sunglasses, but I didn't need to see them to know he was really angry. He is so big and powerful looking, I was afraid he might shove his fist through the window or smash all the lamps. I had a momentary fantasy of Zack going on a rampage in my living room. I pictured Mom getting home, walking in, and finding nothing left but sawdust, which would be an improvement. It's no lie, Zack declared. No lie, I wasn't cheating, but Northwood grabbed me and pulled me out of the room. He said he could have me suspended again, this time for good. Did you tell him you were asking for the time? Dennis asked. Of course, Zack shot back bitterly, but Northwood wouldn't listen. He wouldn't even let me talk. He won't listen to any of us, Lenny broke in, his handsome features set in a hard frown beneath his blonde hair. And he won't give us a break. You know why. You know why Northwood is always on our case. Because he's a jerk, Zack answered. No, because we're rich, Lanny said heatedly. We're rich and he's poor, and that's why we're the ones he always picks on. Yeah, you're right, Melody murmured. He never gives us a break, Caitlin agreed. Zack suddenly bent over and hoisted up his backpack. That's okay, he muttered. That's okay. He unzipped it and reached one of his beefy hands inside. After a few seconds of fumbling through the stuff in the backpack, he appeared to find what he was looking for. When Zack turned back to the rest of us, his expression quickly changed. Beneath the round blue sunglasses, an evil smile crossed his face. Hey man, what's in there? Dennis demanded. I'm going to take care of him, Zack replied, his grin growing wider, his expression menacing. I'm going to take care of Northwood, tonight. Chapter 15 Dennis and Lanny started to laugh, but something about Zack's expression made them cut it short. I was standing behind the couch, my arms crossed tensely in front of me. Everyone stared at Zack. He let his backpack drop to the floor at his feet. It took me a while to recognize what he gripped in his big, chunky hand. A test tube. Still grinning, Zack held it up so we could all see it. W what is it? I stammered. Zack's going to drink it and turn into a werewolf, Melody commented dryly. The yellow liquid inside the test tube glistened in the light. It's nitroglycerin, Lanny declared, jumping to his feet. He's going to blow us all up. Zack let out an evil, mad scientist laugh and held a slender glass tube above his head. Give us a break, Caitlin pleaded. What is it, Zack? Skunk juice, Zack revealed. Huh? We all let out cries of surprise. It's skunk scent, Zack repeated, stepping toward us, stretching a test tube toward us. Here, want a sniff? He reached out to remove the cork cap. Yuck, no way. Get it out of here. Is it really skunk scent? I asked, staring hard at the yellow liquid. Zack nodded. Yeah, my brother got it for me, from a science lab at the university. That's really gross, Caitlin murmured, making a face. Want a sip? Zack held it out to her. Get away, Caitlin screamed. She buried her face in Dennis's sweatshirt. I felt a pang of jealousy. 
I wanted to be sitting where Caitlin was, next to Dennis, but I didn't have time to think about that. Suddenly, everyone was standing, following Zach to the front door. What are you going to do? Caitlin demanded, pulling on her parka. He's going to drink it and then go breathe on Northwood, Dennis suggested. Everyone laughed. Way to go, man. Lanny slapped Zach hard on the back, nearly making him drop the test tube. Whoa, I cried. I had a nightmare vision of my entire house smoldering with skunk scent. Come on, Zach, what's your plan? Where are you going? Melody asked, turning at the front door and blocking the way. I'm not going with you guys to know what you're doing. Zach grinned at her beneath his blue glasses. Simple, he said, holding the test tube waist high. One of us will pour this stuff on Northwood's front stoop. That's all. My brother said it'll take months for the stink to go away. One of us, Dennis demanded. What do you mean, one of us? Well, I got the skunk juice, Zach replied. So someone else should drop it. Here, Dennis, I dare you. He tried to hand the test tube to Dennis, but Dennis raised his hands and backed away. No way, man, he cried. I'm in enough trouble with Northwood. It's revenge, Dennis, Zach insisted, holding out the glass tube. Revenge. You know you want to do it. Come on, I'm daring you. No way, Dennis repeated. He rested a hand on Caitlin's shoulder. It's your skunk juice. You pour it, Melody told Zach. I'm too big. Northwood will see me, Zach started to say. I'll do it, I exclaimed. Don't ask me why I volunteered. The words just popped out of my mouth. I think it had something to do with seeing Caitlin rest her hand on Dennis's shoulder. I think I really wanted to impress Dennis. I wanted to show everyone that I was one of them, one of the group, and I wanted to show Dennis that I was more fun than Caitlin. I didn't think any of those reasons until later. I didn't have any reasons in my head when I just blurted out that I'd do it. Way to go, Joanna, Lanny cried. Zach slipped the test tube into my hand. It felt warm from the tight grip he had had on it. Joanna's a shrimp, Zach explained to the others. She can sneak up there, do the job, and then sneak away without being seen. You're just a wimp, Dennis accused Zach. Zach playfully shoved a big fist into Dennis's face. Say that again. I'll mess you up, man. Dennis made a disgusted face. Hey, Zach, that skunk juice came off on your hand. Whoa. Huh? Zach let out an unhappy cry and started furiously sniffing his hand. Dennis laughed. Gotcha. Zach pounded him hard in the shoulder. Hey, are we going to stand here all night? Let's do it, Lanny exclaimed. We stepped out into a still cold night. A bright half-moon hovered low over the bare trees. Nothing moved, not a leaf stirred. It was eerily quiet. I led the way to Mr. Northwood's house. I was glad to see that the house was entirely dark. Maybe he isn't home, I thought, or maybe he went to bed early. We crossed by driveway and stopped at the side of Mr. Northwood's house. Two rather pitiful evergreen shrubs grew there, and we all ducked behind them. His car isn't in the driveway, Dennis whispered, so he probably isn't home. It might be in his garage, I whispered back. I realized I was gripping the test tube so tightly I might smash it. I loosened my hold on it as I stared over at the front dark stoop. Why am I doing this? I asked myself. Have I lost my mind totally? I glanced at Dennis. He winked back at me encouragingly. My heart skipped. Yes, maybe I have lost my mind, I told myself. Would I do anything for Dennis? I wondered. There is no time to think about that. The others were all whispering, urging me on. I took a deep breath and started jogging across the grass to Mr. Northwood's front stoop. I held the test tube carefully in front of me. Somewhere down the block, a car horn honked, interrupting the eerie silence. I hoped no car would drive by. I stopped beside the low concrete stoop. My heart was pounding so hard I could hear it. I climbed onto the first step and raised the test tube. Hurry, I urged myself silently. I reached a trembling hand to pull off the cork top, and the porch light came on. Chapter 16 Ah! I cried out in shock. The test tube tumbled from my hand. It shattered on the concrete stoop. I turned and bolted for the safety of the evergreen shrubs. Behind me, I heard the front door open. Who's there? Mr. Northwood's angry, shrill voice broke through the silence. I dived behind the shrub, joining the others. And then I heard Mr. Northwood let out a groan of disgust. Oh my heavens, he exclaimed weakly. I heard him utter a curse, and then the front door was slammed shut. My new friends immediately moved to congratulate me. Zach cracked me in a tight bear hug. Joanna, you were awesome, he whispered. You were great, Dennis told me, grinning. We were all laughing, slapping each other high fives, celebrating silently behind the evergreens. Did Mr. Northwood see me? I wondered, glancing toward the front stoop. Does he know who it was? 
Our celebration didn't last long. The disgusting, sour stench traveled fast. We all breathed it in at the same time. It was so gross. I never smelled anything as sickening as this. My stomach lurched. I thought I was going to heave. We're out of here, Dennis cried. Let's get something to eat, Zack urged. We piled into Melody's parents' Mercedes, and a few seconds later, backed down the driveway and roared off down Fear Street. Zack, Lanny, Caitlin, and I somehow squeezed in the back. Dennis rode in the front beside Melody. It was really uncomfortable, but I didn't care. I had never ridden in a Mercedes before. We laughed and choked all the way to the corner. We were all so happy that Mission Skunk Juice had been a success. The restaurant was nearly empty. Shady Side High students usually hung out there till all hours on weekends, but this was a school night. We squeezed into a booth near the back and all ordered hamburgers and french fries. Zack offered to pay for mine, which was a great relief since I didn't have any money with me. I was so happy. Here I was with the most popular kids at Shady Side, and they were all being so nice to me. I really was part of their crowd. Caitlin made sure that she sat next to Dennis. I was unhappy about that, but Dennis kept flashing me secret smiles, and I was thrilled to be the star of the evening. Did you see the loco Northwood's face when he smelled the skunk juice? Zack cried ecstatically. No, I was running too fast, I admitted. His hair really stood up on end, Caitlin declared. Glad I don't sit in the front row in his class, Melody said, holding her nose. His clothes will probably stink for a month, too. We all laughed and joked and had a great time. It was nearly 10.30 when they dropped me off in front of my house. I turned and waved as the silver Mercedes rolled away. I was smiling to myself, thinking about my triumph as I made my way up the driveway, but my smile faded quickly when a dark figure stepped out to meet me.